Welcome, Gabriele, who's going to talk about how to make things accessible. Okay, accessibility. What is the accessibility? Well, <coughs> talk, talk, talk. Talk, talk. Okay, web accessibility uh, means that uh, websites, uh, software, and uh, technology are has to be designed for uh, for uh, also for the people with disability, not only physical but also social and uh, economic. Okay, first actor in the web accessibility <coughs> in web accessibility is the screen reader. Screen reader are uh, a set of uh, assistive technology that uh, that uh, can help. Uh, people uh, visually impaired, uh, illiterate, or uh, with uh, learning disabilities. Okay, the World Wide Web Consortium has worked on accessibility with, uh, with, uh, and has created uh, these, two, these two things. WAE is a web accessibility initiative. It's a team that uh, develops standard and uh, support material for developers for implement uh, accessibility in their code bases. First work uh, of the web accessibility initiative was uh, the ARIA attribute, a set of uh, HTML attribute that defines a way to make uh, web content uh, more readable from uh, the screen reader. Okay, ARIA, ARIA attributes are, the, uh, are divided in uh, roles, properties, and states. Okay, WCAG are uh, a set of uh, guidelines for uh, making web content uh, more accessible, okay? Uh, WCAG are uh, divided in four layers. In, there are the principle, for every principle there are some guidelines, and for every guideline there are uh, the success criteria and uh, the sufficient and ad advisory techniques. Okay. There, this is the, there are the four uh, principles of uh, web content accessibility guidelines. The principles are uh, perceivable, operable, understandable, and uh, robust. Let's see the guideline for uh, each other. For, uh, okay. for the perceivable principle, uh, WCAG defines uh, Guideline for uh, alternative for uh, non-text content, alternative for uh, live streaming, audio and video, uh, for the content orientation and the independence of, uh, from the platform, and uh, guidelines about uh, colors, uh, audio control, uh, contrast, uh, and uh, test sides. Uh, for the operable principle, there are uh, specifications about uh, keyboard shortcuts, uh, uh, timing, uh, timed content uh, for uh, animation and uh, color flashes, uh, for uh, navigability, and uh, for uh, the input modalities. This is simple. The understandable. Uh, Principle has uh, only three good lines about uh, readability, predictability, and uh, input assistance. For the robust principle is one, uh, one good line uh, about the compatibility. Okay, let's see some uh, tricks for uh, for refactor uh, for quickly refactor uh, our code bases. First rule, do you know the difference uh, between the, these two, two stru structures? Okay, first rule is uh, use semantic tags in uh, HTML. Simple. Other tricks are, uh, could be alternative, uh, for, uh, <coughs> alternative text for images, uh, alternative text for uh, audio and video content, and uh, keyboard navigation with the uh, role and tab index attribute. Okay, uh, if you want to, to improve your uh, accessibility, accessibility of your website, you can use uh, 
this tool uh, the, that I show you. This is uh, a, a platform of uh, W3C that uh, compiles for you accessibility reports and uh, send uh, via email. Okay, this is a checklist fitterable for uh, with all the tasks for uh, for have a good uh, accessible uh, web application. This is a, a native tool for uh, for check the contrast uh, of the of the page. This is another tool, but online. Where, where you put uh, the, your foreground color, uh, your application background color, and uh, you find for you every better contrast uh, than yours with the uh, similar color. Okay. DynoMapper is uh, another cloud service for uh, web accessibility report, but uh, it's pay. Web is uh, a free alternative uh, to DynoMapper. Let's see, Web is a very good tool. Fosdem.org. It shows a preview of the website with uh, warnings uh, where, uh, where are uh, things uh, with problems. So uh, Fosdem website has uh, a bit, prob a bit uh, contrast, color contrast problem. Okay, and uh, WebInt is uh, another tool for uh, check the best practice uh, on your application and also as the accessibility section. Uh, WebInt is also available as a web extension. So you can use, uh, is uh, like uh, Google Lighthouse, you know? Uh, okay, perfetto. And it, comp it compiles a uh, report uh, about accessibility. There are uh, no issues. It's a, it's a black page with an image. <laughs> there are no issues here. Okay. You, for check your accessibility, you can use uh, the dev, dev tools of your browser. Uh, dev tools are in for accessibility are included in Firefox and uh, are available uh, as an extension for Chrome. Okay. This is a GitHub collection that uh, collects uh, every resource about uh, web accessibility available uh, on GitHub. Okay, I finished. That was nice. Thank you for catching up. Um, do you have questions? We have time for questions. Question? Difference? He wants the first slide or the second slide, and then he asks the questions about that. Yeah? Ah. Yeah, sorry, so can you explain what name rule value is? Can you explain what name rule value is? Name rule for uh, the input control and uh, for the HTML uh, elements. Okay? Area rule and uh, input name. Okay, it's not clear, yeah. Input name, input value. Okay. Other question? Uh, hi. Um, how how much of these uh, um, like suggestions would be applicable to a desktop application, say written in Qt? Uh, would it be a good start, or do you have other uh, for develop a desktop application? Yes. Um, I'm not a desktop application developer, so but uh, you can uh, you can use uh, the same guideline 
adapted, but uh, WCAG could be the principle and the guidelines could be used also for desktop application. Hi, uh, thank you for your talk. Uh, my question will be like, you know, with developing, um, uh, I'm working on a web-based application, and uh, what would be your suggestion to have an automated, uh, you know, um, way of uh, checking accessibility when developing a web-based application? I know there are Out solutions we're automated. using Axe, uh at the moment for React components. Uh, but, you know, just as a web application, I'm pretty sure there are some good okay. uh, tools for that. Thank you. Good question. I don't know if there are uh, automatic uh, tester, but uh, I use uh, an ESLint plugin that uh, <coughs> uh, expressively for uh, accessibility. And uh, I use that, and uh, so I, I can build application uh, Accessible, uh, accessible application in uh, a build time. <laughs> okay. Um, Accessibility-wise, what framework uh, are from I don't know either to um, like uh, React, Angular, or uh, on the CSS side, which frameworks do do you advise and uh, accessibility wise which one are uh, the one that kind of are more aware accessibility of accessibility uh, is not re not related uh, to any framework you can use uh, the one you want no no sure sure but sometimes a lot of frameworks they provide a lot of widgets and uh, components that they uh, they have accessibility issues if i get a component with a lot of buttons i mean uh, yeah so uh, do you think in the, uh, the scope of frameworks, which one is the one that is more accessibility aware? Is in uh, the community? Okay, um, I don't know, but I use uh, React for work and uh, it has uh, very good, uh, it has no issues with accessibility. I use React and uh, yes, linked with the, the accessibility plugin. Uh, what, what could you give us an example of um, social and economic uh, disabilities? Um, people uh, illiterate, so they can't read uh, on uh, they can read text, text and uh, can use a screen reader for uh, for understand uh, the content. Um, I'm gonna step in. Hi. I uh, have a talk on accessibility later on, but more on the social part. And I would add that the criteria for this is that in many countries, uh, internet is extremely expensive. Like for uh, 35 years, you get around max one gigabyte. And uh, many will not be able to load your page. Uh, there is a really good talk by a friend of mine that I would recommend, Stefan. He is literally comparing the websites, how much they load and how much memory they will eat out of your internet connection. Um, besides the price money-wise, the accessibility to a good connection is also limited in many countries. These two, like exactly how much internet costs outside, we are like in Europe, I would say, outside Europe and maybe even USA, even if in USA you get max 10 gigabytes for $35, which for me is extremely expensive for what uh, we paid here. And again, accessibility to, well, access to a good connection where you can load stuff, not 2G or even less than that. Any other questions? Is there any way to measure if somebody is trying to use, let's say, a screen reader on my site? For, for me as a developer to mm -hmm. see if that's actually like, if somebody is trying to do that. Okay. Uh, I don't know if there is a way, but uh, you have to, to implement accessibility. Uh, before uh, thinking of uh, screen reader. You have to implement uh, an accessible code base uh, and you don't have problem with screen, with, uh, screen reader. More questions? No, so thank you, Gabrielle.